Hey, greetings, YouTube. Um, as you know, the Vacuum of the Month project, we have this Lynn house, and I've already started taking it apart to wash it because it smells fuchi, and I really appreciate my friend letting me borrow this. But it is got this odor, and I don't know if you can see this. Well, it's a 4K camera. Of course you can see this. But there's schmutz in there. I don't know what the fuck that is, but it's it's nasty. And before somebody tells me to watch my language, we're not in Europe. We have freedom of speech, and I am going to utilize that. So if that hurts your feelings, I'm sorry, not sorry. Uh -huh. I've also never taken one of these things apart that I can remember. I've done the hose and countless power heads. So I wasn't even going to film this originally, and then I was like, you know, somebody's going to need to see this. So here we are. So yeah, we're going to, I'm just going to guess and just start taking it apart. And my friend who let me borrow this doesn't know that I'm going to be doing this. So when he gets it back after I'm done with it, hopefully it's in really nice, good condition. So we get to see what's inside a Lindholz. Oh, there's all this stuff inside the Lindholz. Oh my. Um a lot going on there so there's a speed control board so that's why I'm like oh, I'm not sure about this oh okay okay I'll see how we go I see how this part gets started it's kind of a interesting that was kind of an interesting solution to doing that um, so we're gonna pull this board out best we can keeping in mind that this is quite the old vacuum cleaner so we do not want to hurt anything. Oh, there goes the potentiometer. So first thing we're going to pull out are going to be the leads. I just got a new pair of pliers for my shop, so I am really excited about getting to use them for this. Oh, that came out as a double. That was interesting. And the next thing that must come out is that. All right, that frees up a lot of stuff. Now this has one of these little connectors which both Linhouse and SIBO like to use. And they kind of suck because unless you have a good set of screwdrivers, nothing fits in that. And obviously they've got quick disconnects everywhere else. Why they use this kind of connector, I'm not sure. If anybody knows why you would use this over one of these, comment below, I'm really curious about that. Um, okay, we got Linda Hulse. All right, um, things are labeled F3, whatever. You know, I have already taken quite a bit of this shit off. So we are going to start labeling things because I'm not sure where things are going to go. And by the way, if you haven't used these Milwaukee markers, they're fucking awesome. Um, so yeah, this guy was on the end. label him and then I'll, I'll scratch that off when we're done so it's a clean contact don't don't you worry there uh, and then this this guy was right here that's not an issue and of course I have so many markers up here another sharpie I like is this this silver one but we're gonna use this blue and we're just gonna mark Mr. Blue, Mr. Blue, that way I know which what, and you know, this might not actually be necessary if I really sit there and look at the circuit, but because I don't work on these every day, I certainly would like to know. And then of course, why not label black with black? just to be on the safe side. All right, so now I feel much better about taking all that apart. You know, it's different once a customer's machine, but once a friend's machine, you just, I'm gonna take a little bit of extra care, especially since it's such a nice machine. All right, so, good news is that doesn't smell. Um, so we're just gonna set that aside. Kinda looking better now. 
and this guy is going to fly out of there. It's like grease or oil or wax. I'm not sure what the what this is. It's so weird. Okay. So there's the mains cord. As they like to say over uh, across the pond. Take the mains cord off. It's really interesting how you do that. They put a fucking long board on here, and that is one of the nice things about this. This is kind of like a central vac. So we're gonna stick this cord just off to the side for now. My top down drag could be a little bit moved. I'm sure, this is blowing your eardrums up, but I think that's going to be easier for you all to see. Don't know if I'm going to need those. So, next, we're going to do. Kind of a duct. The motor's actually on the other side. <laughs> Those screws do not wish to come out. I just don't like it when that happens. Wow. They're like poked in there. A weird. There we go. These screws have rust on them too. If you can see that, that's kind of weird. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one of the Fuji parts. So it looks like. Ah, the torque screws definitely indicate that they don't want you in that section. So that's where I need to be. I just bought this little set off Amazon. I'm not so happy with it, but it's better than turning screws by hand. And having a quick change chuck is like unnecessary. It took me longer to change the bit than to take the screws out. Feels like there are screws under that. Well, let's try taking the Phillips out for fun. Those are long. screws are holding like that. That is completely overbuilt. I would suspect nothing more from Lindholz. Ooh. It's got an odor to it. Oh. It would appear. Yeah, that needs to come out. And that is not your normal screwdriver size, of course. So we're going to just be easier on her. There's like little rubber gaskets here. And I'm just going to take them out, set them aside. I should probably get me an O-ring kit. If you don't have an O-ring kit, that's something to, to have for any sort of repair. It's just a box with a bunch of O-rings in it. 
And this appears to be like dried rubber, this grommet here. So I'm gonna attempt to pull all this out. Now the friend who lent me this is one of the guys who's just like, he'll wash wires and let them dry. And I'll do that, but if I can pull them out easily, I'll do that too. That one might not be coming out. Onto the motor. It's a nice thick rubber mount. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Love how Linhouse just makes some of the coolest stuff. Ooh, it's a beast. Ooh, it's got the odor to it too. So we're gonna wash the second back here. Now, let's take a look. That's cool. Of course, I forgot to put my gloves on. So this is... Again, because this is kind of loose, I'm just going to put a dab of silicone on there. The purpose of that is going to be so to keep that just from rattling loose, just in case. That way if it rattles... That way, if it does decide to rattle loose, uh, or they'll prevent it from rattling loose, I guess, so it, just so that that doesn't come loose and destroy the motor. Let's make sure that that's not hitting. I feel like the cap was rubbing there. If you're ever not sure if something's rubbing, really sure way to do this. way dry. If we're not sure if it's rubbing, we're just going to paint it. Did appear to scratch a little bit off, maybe. Let's try that one more time. important that is to its operation. This is like how not to repair a vacuum is what this video is turning into. back together now. And Reggie, if you ever watch this, I apologize about this. 
all back to where it should be. Get all the rubbish tools out of the way. And time to put the motor back in its thing. I'm sure everything's hooked up. Yep, yep. And this motor, it just kind of sits in here. And you can see kind of how it was. And with these, we're going to put some, some uh, pledge on it. It's going to make it a little bit easier for insertion. taking this out thinking it was that's good all right that's beautiful you just put these things back where they go Not on there all the way. No. This is still wet. got this thing which again needs to be heated up Melted my carpet a little bit with that. Oh boy. This is going to go in. one of our wires which was secured just over here ever so nicely by Lindhouse just like so and that had some really fine uh, screws to it Long screws. Right. Now we have another wire put in. This was to the motor. Everything's super tight. 
like our favorite German version. Guten Tight. Let's see how everything just fits in there. Nothing's in here with a double insulation through the grommet is completely unnecessary, but a really nice touch. Great appreciation for how well this thing's made. So that fits in there like that and goes to the motor. The question is, did I mark the motor when I took it off? <laughs> nope. I just started pulling things. So I'm seeing if there's a reference point. Oh, there's two little rubber grommets that go on here at this point. We have these, they're pretty destroyed, but I'm going to put some pledge on them and hope that they work. Um, these were like right here and right here. Not really sure if those are just like uh, some extra nice, again, nice touch, but feels unnecessary to my simple American eyes. Anything else? Any reference point on here for this? Oh. So when you put this on, the motor must be lined. Oh, so we're gonna line the motor. I was trying not to reuse the, the rubber spaces because I want the one the gasket kind of to be a little bit more wedged, but that that of course is not going to be the case. We're just gonna check our dry fit on this. Alright, that will fit on there just fine. So now Gonna hook up our wires to the motor. I don't see any place to tuck the wires in. That's kind of odd to me, but just making sure they're in, not gonna get pinched anywhere. And that all goes together like that. Now, here comes the the thing that I'm trying to be very good about, which is keeping track of where screws are, where they go, and what they do. Did I have? Yeah, I retrieved the screw from the bucket. Tip on that. Torque those in a minute after our. Yeah, but I pinched that, that thing. I think the thing to do is to use the 220 from the bottom first. It's kind of counterintuitive, but. Now that's been realigned properly. I'm going to use the T20 from the bottom first. Try not to burn myself with my hot heat gun over here. on your car when you do this sort of thing.
I'm going to screw you away from me here. Lost in the carpeted abyss. Or maybe I just put it back. So now that that's done, I don't trust the torque gun by itself. Um, so because of how this is made, we're just going to... And again, I have worked on enough of these to know the specifications. So, doing all this by hand over there just makes everything that much better. So that's cool. It goes back together fairly easily. Um, at this point, I'm going to put the electrical cord back on. We're going to end up putting some of the other stuff in here. I'm going to do the electrical cord first. And I'm going to tell you why. Cause it gets like threaded around here and it's kind of weird. Sorry folks. Um, I think that will just be easiest the way this is made. See how that's threaded around. It would appear that, that <laughs> those were what went in there. Now that we've got that clamp in there. And this this clamp flips for uh, it appears that it flips for different types of cords. I could be wrong. It's installed. So I bet you one side is for let me see here. Yep, one side is for uh, your three-prong cord, one side is for the the other cord. And it appeared to be broken, I guess when it was taken off by some gorilla. There we go. Maybe there's one more fine screw that holds this. This thing really just works by friction, so I'm not too concerned, but Drop the safety glue in there. And with this plastic resin that they use, that will actually bond it really well. And the safety glue, the glue is not on the cord, it's on the gizmo we're putting on. So I'm going to snap the gizmo all the way down here. Again, if this was a customer's machine, I'd replace that thing, but this is not going to get like extensive service, and it's basically going to get babied for the rest of its life. I'll twist these. It surprises me they didn't tin the cord. I'm kind of tempted to tin the cord. Um, I'm going to blow the circuit board out with compressed air. Just to be on the safe side. Right. The full bag check indicator that was in here. The thing about that, or the, the, this little sensor, what really surprised me when I, I was taking this apart yesterday, oh, so got to cover on, first, was that the, uh, it didn't appear to be, um, okay, you see why I put the electrical cord on there? Kind of clamps it right here too. Uh, okay. Start to say is it didn't appear to be uh, 
Um, is there any sort of rubber thing? It just fits in the plastic, so there's a tight enough fit, which I thought was kind of bizarre. Usually there's some sort of grommet or something with that. Let's see if that's too hard for this. So you got to adjust your uh, torque settings with these things as you go along, especially with older machines. You don't want to over torque anything, strip anything. So I think I've been pretty good about this machine. All right. So it doesn't look like it, but the, she had a bat, and this is much, much cleaner than it was. Uh, it definitely smells a lot fresher. Okay, as I was saying, this potentiometer that goes in here. Um, it doesn't seem to. Yeah, it is a tight fit. Some fucking engineering that they, these guys do. Set this box under. Set this on a box under here to support this for a second. Uh, now there's this funny little piece that held it. And there's also, before I forget, there is the wand holder, which is All right. which just gets a small little bit of grease in there, and that's basically just to reduce any squeaking that might incur with us. So let's start plugging things into the board. As I stated yesterday when I was taking this thing apart, I color coded the shit out of everything, so it should be fairly easy going back together. We got the green. We got green. It actually makes sense what's here for the most part, but. Alright, that one. this board sit in there this is wire it sits in there just like that I think let's pull the wires off let's put the board in and then plug the wires in let's see if that's easier it give me the most genuous uh, most amount of room to work with here In terms of where everything fits. All right, so there's green. Then we got red. Hmm. All right, let's give it a little tug up there. That's as much slack as we have. Right, the camera battery ran out while I was plugging everything in. I wrapped with electrical tape one of the connections so it didn't touch. I did notice upon doing that that the circuit board has the no-no burn marks. Uh, that's, a, that's a official term. I'm gonna just see if it's corrosion I can brush off. Oh, looks like it. Just looks like corrosion from the flux. Just clean those off real quick. Um, we got this odd, odd thing to put on. I've never seen anything like this on a vacuum. And then this would go under it. Okay, so we have to do the cord now. That's so weird. This is so weird. Very, very uh, Italian. I was expressing uh, when I was taking this apart my dislike for this kind of connector. And again, if you understand why a company would use this versus the regular snap connectors, please comment below. Um, 
You know, actually, the only thing I can think of is Sibo also uses these in the handle, and so does Linhouse. Wonder if this allows them to just use one universal cord or something like that. Let's check that connection. And uh, just double check to make sure your machine's unplugged when you're doing this. <laughs> you don't want any surprise zaps. Yep, and that's why I don't like these things. Because they can squeeze your wire out at the last minute. And if your wire's tinned, it's easier, but it's not. So not. And my, my soldering iron is currently non-functional. I had an old Radio Shack one that just took a shit. I'm going to buy myself a Hecko one next time I really need it. But I'm going to put that off as something I can buy later. Alright. Where's that? You know, I'm going to say whoever put the cord in put it in wrong because it's supposed to clip in this thing and it's it's actually not. So we'll do this and then I'm going to actually loosen that and tighten the cord. Let's do that now while I've got more room to work with. That all makes sense now, how that's supposed to go. So, crafty Italians. And the odd man out. This goes right there. You gotta be careful not to pinch your cord with this. Uh, get in the hole. Sometimes it doesn't fit in the hole, it helps to spit. Beautiful. Let me just uh, tuck all of that in. You can actually see a lot of this stuff, you know, inside there when you turn it tilted. It's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, I think it was definitely in a flood with these screws like this. filter in this. Highly recommend it, but there's just the micro filter in place on this one. Um, this came to me this way, but these are broken off here. They don't seem to really affect it that much. Uh, but again, if this was a customer machine, I'd insist upon replacing that. But this is kind of a surprise service that my friend I give it back to him at the end of vacuum of the month. He's going to be. I'll see if he even notices. He's got so many vacuums. You might not even notice, which would be kind of funny. Uh, but I hope he notices. I think 
he's got some of the wrong tools in here, by the way. I'm missing, it's like a little brush here. Probably left it upstairs in the bathroom. But there are your tools. Not sure what goes there, but something. Something did come to me. The machine. Turn this over. It's interesting. There's just a just a foam filter for this. There's nothing special about him. Almost looked like it was intended for wet pickup or something. The bag is new. I took it out for vacuum of the month. In case you're wondering. Very strange shape on the bag for my vacuum. Right, I just picked it up. You guys are probably wondering. further away. Just picked this up and it felt a little funky. I'm going to just check my torque on these screws. Make sure they're torqued all the way. Yeah. Just some play in this plastic. But I have to say, this thing, when these are new out of the box, these don't feel like that. Again, this one's probably like 20 years old. So let's see if I did everything right or not. <laughs> it still has some bearing noise. Let's try locking everything in. Vacuum, if that increased. Mm -hmm. 